Hi everyone, welcome to episode 14 of ARM Template Masterclass. This week we're going to be having a look at deployment modes. Last week we looked at deployment scopes, which allowed us to define where our resources got defined. With deployment modes, we're defining how our resources get deployed. There are only two modes we need to worry about, which are called incremental and complete. The incremental deployment mode is the default, and it's what we've been using for the last 13 episodes whenever we run a deployment and we don't specify a deployment mode. Incremental mode is probably the safest mode available, and it looks like this. With incremental mode, if we deploy a template that's got a resource in it that doesn't exist in Azure, then it will create the resource. That's fine. If the template has a resource in it that matches the resource that's already in Azure, then it will attempt to make that resource look like what's in the template in terms of the properties. There are a couple of things to be aware of with this, however. Firstly, if you deploy a template against an existing resource and you don't define some properties, they don't get ignored. Those properties will be set to whatever the defaults were. Now, most of the time, this doesn't affect you because if you, if you created this resource in the template in the first instance and didn't define the properties, then you would have got the defaults. And so having these set to default is not a problem. However, if you're looking at a resource that perhaps wasn't originally created by your template, or you've changed your template, or you're using a new template, you need to be aware that anything you don't explicitly define will be set to defaults, which could be different to what you've currently got before you deploy the template. Secondly, not all properties can be updated. There are some properties that you can only set at the first time you deploy a resource, and so if you try and change those when you deploy a template to a resource that already exists, it will give you an error because it can't change those properties. Lastly, with incremental, if a resource exists in Azure that isn't in your template, then your template will just leave it alone. It won't do anything to that resource, it will not manage it, it will just be left as it is. And that's one of the reasons why incremental is kind of a safe approach because it's not going to try and remove resources that aren't mentioned in the template. Complete mode is a bit different. What complete mode is trying to do really is it's trying to make what's in Azure exactly match what you're deploying in your template. So if we deploy a template and we use the new AZ resource group deployment, so we're doing it at a resource group scope, then what you're basically saying with the complete mode is this resource group should look exactly like what's defined in my template. So as with incremental, if you're adding new resources, they will get created, no change there. And with existing resources, it's the same as with incremental, it will try and change properties to match what's in your template and it will reset any you don't define to defaults. However, where it gets a bit different is for existing resources. So if you have a resource in Azure that's not defined in your template, so maybe somebody created it manually or maybe it was defined in a different template that somebody's run against that resource group, then in complete mode it will look to delete that resource because it's not reflecting what's in the template. Also for existing resources that are no longer defined in your template, it will try and remove those as well. Now that's a bit different to things that are not defined in your template. So what I'm talking about here is if you have a condition in your template that defines whether or not a resource is created, or you've got a loop that defines how many of a resource are created. If you change a parameter or whatever defines that condition, for example, and so that condition changes from what was true when you first deployed it to false, then ARM will look to delete that resource because your condition has changed. Similarly with a loop, if you had three resources created before and you change the value to two, it will look to delete the additional resource. There's a slight caveat to this in that you do need to be using the latest uh, PowerShell commandlets and schema to, to make sure that that's how it happened. Um, some of the older schemas were a bit inconsistent as to whether what, you know, certain resources got deleted or not. There's also another caveat to be aware of, which is child resources. So if you had a parent resource that was not in your template, um, let's take a storage account, for example, if you had if there was a storage account in your, in your resource group that's not in your template, that will get deleted. However, if you do define that storage account in your template, but there's a container within that storage account which is not defined in your template, then that won't get removed. If you remove the parent, the whole thing will get cleaned up, but it won't remove the container if you remove that. There is a long list of resources and what their child resources do when um, they go out of scope of a complete resource, which I put the link here, I'll put it in the uh, notes as well, um, that can tell you 
whether or not a child resource will get deleted. So a little bit complicated if you're looking at child resources. If you're just looking at parent resources, then it's fairly simple. If they're not in your template or if they're no longer in your template, they will get removed. So let's have a look at how this works in action. I've got a resource group here and into that I've deployed a couple of storage accounts using a template with a loop in it. I've also got a network card in here which I've deployed manually using the portal. It's not part of my template. We're now going to use the what if command to try out some deployments and see what happens. If you're not familiar with what if, I'd recommend having a look at episode 6 of this series. But what this allows us to do is to actually find out what the deployment is going to do without actually having to deploy the resources. So it's a quick and easy way for us to check what our template is going to do. If you're going to look at using the complete deployment mode, I would very much suggest getting in the habit of running what if before you do a deployment, um, because you know, obviously there is the danger of you removing things that you might want to check that what's being removed is actually what you thought is going to be removed before it happens. So first up, if we just run what if now without making any changes to the template, what you can see is we get a couple of things back. Firstly, we can see that ARM does actually know about the network card I've deployed there. You can see it does actually re reference it in the what if command, but it's marked as ignored. It's not going to do anything with it. It knows it's there, it's not going to touch it. And then we have the two storage accounts we've got deployed, which have got no change, which is expected. I've now made a couple of changes to the actual template. Firstly, I've added a tag to the storage account loop, just to add an additional tag to the resource, and I've added a new resource for a public IP address. So if we run what if on this, and we'll see exactly what we would expect. Again, the network card's being ignored, but the storage account, they've got a change because it's adding a tag, and we've then got an, a new resource being added for the public IP address. Because we didn't define a deployment mode at the command line, it's used incremental by default. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and add the mode flag to our command and set that to complete. And so if we run the what if command again, and you see what we get back here is slightly different because now it has recognized the network card is there and it recognizes it's not in the template. So it's marked that for deletion. Everything else is the same. We're adding the public IP address. We're changing the tags on the storage account. That's exactly the same, but we're gonna go ahead and delete that network card. Finally, I'm gonna make another change. The storage accounts have been created in a loop. That's how we've got two storage accounts, is that there's a parameter which sets the number of storage accounts I want to create. So I'm gonna change that parameter now from two to one. And if we run the what if command again, we can see now that not only is it going to delete the network card, but it's also marked the second storage account for deletion as well. Because I changed my loop, that, now, that second storage account is no longer in scope for my template, so it's going to get deleted. If we go back and run that same command using the incremental mode, we can see that nothing's getting deleted. So not only is it ignoring the network card, it's ignoring that second storage account. And that's how deployment modes work. Hopefully that all made sense. But as always, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments, I'll be happy to answer them. Next week, we're gonna have a look at using deployment scripts in templates. Until then, hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time.